Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming to this uh, late afternoon session. I know it's been a busy day, and uh, already started yesterday. And uh, bless you. And we'll have one more slot after this, so uh, definitely a long day. So um, thanks for coming. My name is uh, Christoph Feisinger. I'm uh, based in uh, sunny Redmond. Uh, if there was a little rain yesterday, I think if there was a rain in Brisbane, blame me for bringing some fresh Seattle rain. And uh, today, along with uh, Angus Florence, who's based here in Australia, who's a customer success manager, we want to talk about, uh, we're going to give you an overview of enterprise social for Microsoft. And I should have said, uh, based in Redmond, and I'm on the uh, SharePoint uh, marketing team. The uh, agenda for this session is uh, hopefully we'll make it a little interactive, but because it's tech ed, and a lot of you, I'm guessing, are IT pro, and some of you might be uh, developers as well. We'll talk specifically, we'll start with, you know, what's, what's our approach with enterprise social? Uh, and more importantly, something you care about, you know, what is our roadmap? We did make an acquisition over 13 months ago um, of a company called Yammer. And, you know, what are we doing about to uh, bring all this together? Um, and at the tail end of the set of slides, I'll talk about the, this topic. I'll give you a little demo, specifically the, how's the integration coming together, not the functionality uh, not how to use Yammer itself. And that's going to lead into the next topic that Angus is going to talk about. Again, being an uh, expert on the product, being a customer success manager, helping uh, customers realize value. He'll talk about how this is, you know, this is a journey. It's not just about the technology, which I'll cover. And he'll give you kind of a Yammer one-on-one -on -one crash course. And then more importantly, he'll talk about that methodology that, um, that the uh, Yammer te team has built over the years uh, with you know, number of customers to to roll out um, enterprise social at, at your company, and we'll wrap up with uh, next steps. You'll see there's a lot of links, a lot of information, and we only have 75 minutes, so we try we're going to try to cram as much as possible. But um, there'll be plenty of uh, other things you can read on when you get back to uh, your respective desk after this event. Um, again, we'll try to take questions, but like, like I mentioned, is we do have a few slides and we get demos, so it might take one or two depending on how we're doing with timing. <coughs> and if not, we'll just save the questions for, for the end and then we'll just hang around if there's any things that we haven't answered that you uh, want to get an answer on. So before I start, actually I should have asked, how many of you were at the keynote yesterday? I should have asked the opposite. How many of you missed the keynote yesterday? Two people. Great. That's pretty good. Um, so anyway, the reason I'm uh, asking is for 95% of you, uh, yesterday Adam Pisoni uh, talked about Yammer and this notion of disruptions and responsive org. So I'm not going to speak too much about it. Again, like I say, there's numerous, decks, uh, numerous links at the end of this session that talks about the value, which is typically a question I get quite a bit, especially when I'm talking to CIOs or executives, which is, hey, Christoph, this enterprise social thing, is it? Just Facebook for the enterprise, and if so, you know, is that really going to help our employees, our customers, our partners be more productive? Is it really going to produce at the end of the day a good return on investment, or is it just another distraction that I'm going to get my employees um, confused and non-productive? So again, I wasn't planning to talk about the value of enterprise social, but at the very least, I wanted to play a video that kind of illustrates what is the value for some of the customers. And I've got to say, I've been traveling worldwide um, for the past year and, and talking about this topic. And you guys in, in Australia are actually a very mature country on this topic. I don't know if it's a culture. I still wish I could export that model. But you do have a lot of big customers, whether it's, actually I shouldn't say it's not big, but you get customers in retail, in mining, in, in consulting, in, uh, in <coughs> banking, pretty much in all sectors that are pretty far ahead in this notion of of leveraging an enterprise social network at their organizations to get benefit. That's because of me, mainly. That's because of you? Yeah, mainly. That's a good look. Uh, you're special, so we need to clone you uh, <laughs> worldwide. So anyway, again, just to show you what is the value, what is Yammer uh, brings in terms of value, I'll just play one video. And again, for the two gentlemen that missed the keynote, Adam talked about some of those case studies. And by the way, it, it's recorded and the recording is live. It's up on TechNet. I look for the keynote and you'll see that 20 minute segment. And I didn't want to be uh, redundant, so I'm just going to play um, 
the first video. Oops. Just get out of full screen mode. Audio? Audio guy. Can you send the sound off? Please. Design and constructor. We are a fully integrated shopping centre developer, design and constructor, and shopping centre. Oops. Hang on. The owner. As a director, I oversee 40 shopping centres across the country. Retail is a very dynamic environment, changing very rapidly. The ability of the team to be able to stay on top of and understand what's coming at them and get an earlier insight into that, I think actually gives us a unique opportunity to be able to work very closely with our retailers so that they understand that we see what's coming and what can we do to support them to be successful. We had a gift card initiative where we were rolling out some changes to the gift card. I think it's fair to say that some of the changes were perhaps not as well thought through as they could have been and the team on the ground were seeing that real time in feedback coming back from retailers and feedback coming back from shoppers. What Yammer allowed us to do was identify that issue very, very quickly and quickly collaborate on a solution. The solution that was delivered certainly saved at least six if not more weeks of, uh, of headache. Yammer for me allows me to engage in a much deeper way. I get involved in conversations now with people who may be concierge staff members, security team members, people who I would only occasionally see when I'm actually physically out in the centre and frankly most of those conversations would be, hi, how, how are things? versus a Yammer conversation can be much more precise about a specific topic or a specific event. Social networking is, is so important in business right now because so many people are using it in their private lives. It's become very much the norm. It puts the power in the hands of the employees and allows them to define how and when they want to communicate as well as how and when they want to receive that communication. Good. I should have asked, how many of you are using Yammer today in your organization? Quite a bit. How many of you are Office 365 customers? A little bit. I'm, I'm assuming the rest is SharePoint on-prem? Good. Um, so anyway, I picked this one, obviously, a uh, local retailer. But typically, just to recap what um, was discussed in the video, is typically the, the value of enterprise social uh, typically is categorized into around three verbs. It helps engagement. So exactly like you've seen in the video or like uh, Adam talked yesterday, we want to tap the full potential of our employees. And in retail or in the food industry or in mining, whatever, it doesn't matter. But you know you get a lot of employees or in manufacturing, they're actually not sitting in front of a P PC. There might be security or they might be uh, waiters. Uh, they might be operating heavy equipment, but those are still part of your organization. And guess what? If you're having a big security campaign on you want to, or safety campaign on you want to improve safety at your organizations, how do you reach to those, to those operators that are not in front of a PC? If you're, if you're a retailer, you know, how do you make sure that even the security person is bought into whatever initiatives you're driving? If you're in the food industry and you're launching a new burger, like Adam discussed yesterday, how do you make sure you capture feedback from the waiters and waitress, which again are not sitting in front of a PC? So I think it's a very interesting topic that with enterprise social, it's not just about the folks in front of their desk, but potentially what we call non-information workers that potentially might not even have an email address, but again, still, they're still your employees, and they might have very, very valuable feedback depending on whatever initiative you're doing, whether it's ideations or just improving uh, health or safety records uh, at your organization. So that's just one example. And again, like I said, there's plenty of hours uh, in the Australian market uh, across multiple segments. So switching gears, uh, and specifically what, what I talked about earlier, which is what, what is our roadmap? And I'll start with you know, what is unique about us um, at Microsoft. And the way we talk about it is, you know, I should have said enterprise social is not just about Yammer. It's not just about hashtag and that mention, things we're probably used to in Facebook or different Instagram, Twitter, and things like that. But it goes beyond that. You could argue that this is social, right? You're in a room, you travel, you took a couple days off work, whether you travel from Melbourne or Sydney or Victoria or whatever, and that's social face-to-face, -face, right? Be on the phone, that's social. Um, and Yammer is just another form, and I'll talk about it later. But the idea is um, there's different tools and communication channels to get things done. 
And so what's unique about Microsoft is the first thing we think social should be seamless. And what we say by that, what, sorry, what we uh, mean by that is if Christoph is in uh, PowerPoint and maybe he's producing a deck for our tech at presentation with Angus and he leaves on briefs in PowerPoint because that's the tool I'm using to get that de deliverable at, uh, of the door, I should be able in the future to potentially start a conversation. Yes, I can use the rich PowerPoint co-offering and revisions, but maybe I want to start a conversation, say, hey, Angus, here's the first version of the deck, and search your slides, what do you think, you know, timing, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is seamless, it should social, I shouldn't have to go to another tool to loop in whatever the team members that I want to get feedback or input or announce, hey, I've got this V1 of this uh, picture for a marketing campaign, or here's the new employee charter that we're going to give to all the uh, new hires. I should be able to do that with whatever tool I have uh, that I'm using at this uh, moment in time. And you'll see, I'll, I'll give you a little more color about that. So first of all, it should be seamless, not a destination. The second thing is we think social should be, enterprise social should be contextual. And what we mean by that is we all in our, in our life, whether we're in IT, probably a lot of you, or whether you work for the project management office, or whether you work in R&D, or you're in finance, or, or HR, or in consulting, you all have a set of processes that we follow. You know, how do you engage with an employee? Or how do you roll out an update on a server? Or again, if you're in manufacturing, you probably have a lot of processes around safety and how do you uh, do uh, downtime on maintenance on specific equipment. So we think that social should be contextual, meaning potentially all our lives in the business world are driven by business process. And at, at different stages, different steps in that process, maybe I need to have a conversation with my peers. Or maybe I need to have a, an announcement or maybe I need to loop in experts, or maybe I don't even know the experts, but I'm gonna ask a question to the community. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this, on this uh, piece of equipment, but I need help on, on, on repairing whatever is broken. So let me reach out. So again, it should be contextual, meaning it should not just appear randomly. I should be able to have the conversation that are related to a business process. And then the third thing around our approach with enterprise social is it should be trusted. You know, whether it's Westfield or any of the customers that, that Adam talked about uh, yesterday, like Nationwide, which was large insurance, or the uh, Red Robin, which is a, a fast food a burger chain in the US, uh, you're gonna be capturing valuable uh, intellectual property. Maybe it's a new recipe for a burger, or maybe it's, uh, again, uh, information about your competitors. Maybe it's financial information. So you want all that information to be trusted, secure, Govern. You know, this is not a public enterprise social network that we've all used to. That potentially uh, we can be tapping into and selling ads. No, this is needs to be controlled and abide to whatever regulatory or compliance that your organization has, depending on the on the department or depending on the industry. So that's that's what's unique about our approach with enterprise social. The next couple slides is. Again, like I said, you know, I've talked about a little bit about the value. The next couple of slides are just three scenarios on how to enable um, social value at your enterprise. And the first one is typically, actually I'm going too fast. I'll talk about the three scenarios next. But um, remember I told you that enterprise social should be uh, seamless. And this is a little bit of a double click on that. And our Approach is, like I say, it shouldn't be a destination, meaning social, if I want to be in social and let's say Yammer all day, that's fine. But if I want to leave and breathe into whatever tool of choice, I used PowerPoint earlier, but it could be another productivity tool, um, I should be able to do so. So our, our vision is that you, sh you should have a single layer that connects all those applications. So obviously, we're going to be best citizen with our stack at Microsoft. And I'll talk again about the roadmap later on, but we're going to start with Office 365. And what I mean by Office 365 is the whole suite of services. Is it Exchange? Is it Link? Is it SharePoint? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, SharePoint, think of this as maybe uh, SharePoint on-premises. Um, Link, you know, we think there's, again, uh, dotted lines as well in the future where potentially if I want to be social on Link and maybe see our uh, Yammer conversation, I should be able to do so without leaving that tool of choice that I'm using, let's say, link client on that PC or link mobile on my uh, phone. And then there's, um, we're also gonna integrate with our uh, Dynamics suite, things of Microsoft Dynamics as, you know, CRM and, and other products that, uh, that are uh, 
Dynamics Division offers. And then the last one is kind of a catch-all for all the line of business apps that we have. And I know, you know, especially in IT or any organization, including us at Microsoft, we've got dozens. Whether it's homegrown apps, like, I don't know, ticketing, call centers, whether it's, uh, you know, ERP, enterprise resource planning, whether it's your accounting, your HR systems, et cetera, et cetera. So we think, you know, what's unique, back to the slides before, that Yammer can connect all those apps. And another point typically I make to a technical audience is it doesn't matter if those apps are on-premises or, or uh, hosted or, you know, software as a services or infrastructure as a service. You know, Yammer obviously is, a, is an online service, but the beauty is to connect all those things. So if you get like, a, let's say, a SharePoint form on-premises, a very common scenario, but maybe you got, you know, an, a CRM online application, we think potentially Yammer could be the glue between all those line of business apps that every organization has. And again, the tagline social should be wo woven in, depending on, on the role and your usage. You shouldn't have to go to another app to see conversations and to participate or get help from the, the community that uh, you belong to. So with that, like I said, let's switch into three, um, think of how to scenarios to enable enterprise social at your company. And the first one we talk about is social productivity platform. And remember what I told you earlier that depending on, you know, we all do that, we, depending on the time of the day and depending on what we're trying to do or what projects we're in, we might use different set of tools. So here where you're looking at, for instance, uh, SharePoint, uh, the new SharePoint 2013 SkyDrive Pro, and you know, this is my documents in the cloud, synced to how many devices I've got. It's nice, secure, and safe. So, you know, that's what I use every day at Microsoft, so I don't have to worry about my PC being stolen. And you know, maybe Garf has a document um, that's stored in uh, SkyDrive Pro, and you know you can get the over card that we've delivered with 2013 that's the office web apps so i can get a preview of the document but what's interesting is garf potentially can start a conversation with his peers you know is it a conversation because he wants to loop in angus say hey, have, here's a v1 on my deck or here's a a draft of this deliverables or specifications let's say we're in r&d um you know angus take a look or maybe it's an announcement hey you know team marketing team r&d team it team you know here's the the best practice to update, to upgrade to uh, Windows 8.1 RTM. So I can easily post, so Garv didn't have to go elsewhere, but pretty quickly, he can start a conversation in Yammer without leaving the tool of choice. Again, I'll show you later, but you just click, it's a little hard to see, let's see if I get the laser pointer. I'm not gonna try it, but there's a little post in the middle. Um, so Garv doesn't have to uh, leave his uh, tool of choice, but yet he can start a conversation. I'm using PowerPoint. I, actually, this is PowerPoint, but earlier was Word. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be using the rich co-offering revisions that uh, Office offers. I'm just saying that adding a layer of conversation potentially can get you things out of the door faster. Maybe it can help your peers discover uh, content that has been produced. So here you're seeing, a, this is a mock-up. You know, we haven't shipped that, but this is a web app, so rendering in the browser, in this case of a PowerPoint. Um, slide and you can see the, that, that persistent uh, discussion uh, from the peers on whatever the discussion was around this deliverable. And then, you know, this continues depending, so I can have persistent conversation around that deck, but maybe, you know, I've got, a, I need urgent feedback and then maybe I can see presence from my peers. And then that's when I would switch to link and link online. And, you know, this can go a step further. I think there's a demo tomorrow where maybe um, you know, here it shows Molly, one of those fictitious characters, but maybe I've, I'm working with a graphic designer, a freelance DBA, database administrator, and that person maybe doesn't have Link because they're just a one-man shop, maybe they're on Skype. So, you know, Link on Skype, I can do that federation, and I can get things done. Or maybe I can schedule a call with those, with those different peers that participate in this deliverable, and I can get things done. So. In summary, what we mean by social productivity is, again, we're going to weave in that notion of social in pretty much all the tools that, that we have in the office division. And like, like I just discussed earlier, and then as I just showed you, social is not just Yammer conversation, but potentially, depending on the, the communication mode that I need, on the urgency of the answers, I might switch to something a little more immediate, like such as Link IM or Link Voice on Video, to get things done. 
So that's one, one example of, um, of a how-to scenario to enable enterprise social. The second scenario is what we call a social intranet. Actually, I shouldn't say we call. It's, uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz on if you just uh, do a Bing search on it. You'll see a lot of articles about this. But the notion is, you know, we all have intranets for many years. And, you know, hopefully a lot of you uh, are using SharePoint. And, and the realization is employees, maybe some that are sitting at, a, at their desk, maybe are going to that portal. But over time, they're not, you know, it's not vibrant. It's not exciting. And people are not engaging on content, meaning maybe you're releasing something and maybe you're going to get feedback. Or maybe you're going to call out for the employees, hey, where should we have the, uh, the Christmas party uh, next December? Or hey, we're going to do a contest and we're going to give away a free Xbox for whoever has the best uh, safety record improvement in my uh, manufacturing plant. So what you're looking at is just a, a mock-up of a rich um, intranet that you can build with SharePoint 2013. You know, obviously, we got rich uh, uh, editing capabilities in SharePoint 2013, as well as, yes, you can put rich content, such as video and, and stuff like that. But what you're looking at in the middle is that notion of adding a dynamic conversation within that site, which is, again, <coughs> what we call social intranet. And, um, and like I showed earlier, yes, you know, Besides engaging with uh, your different peers using that notion of that water cooler that you know, is maybe the company feed, uh, you can also switch to something more real time, which is link integration, where potentially I want to have an immediate conversation with that person because I think they've got a great idea or I, I want to help them right away. And I should be able to do that in the future thanks to uh, link integration. And as you would all expect, mobile is definitely key. And meaning that when, you know, this is maybe the first big screenshot is what I'm looking at on my PC, but as soon as I'm traveling, I, let's say I'm going to another site, I'm visiting a customers, or I'm just had to leave uh, home earlier to pick up the kids, I should be able to continue those conversations or at least see what's happening um, in the company on my favorite mobile device. Obviously, this is a Windows phone. Sounds funny now. We announced the uh, Nokia acquisition. But yes, there's apps on Android, on iOS, and we care, yes, you know, this is not just about phone. I could have put screenshots of iPad on, and, uh, and Windows 8 tablets as well. The third scenario to enable enterprise social is uh, to enable, to bring social to business processes. I remember when I was telling you our approach, you know, it's about being contextual and seamless. And I was talking about that a little bit. And the idea here is, again, think of, uh, your organizations, folks in finance or HR or it doesn't matter, or in uh, supply chain, they're not in front of SharePoint every day. They might be in their favorite SAP or their favorite ERP and they're in accounting, they're doing their double ledger all day, and that's fine. You know, if that's the tool uh, that they need to uh, get their job done, they shouldn't have to leave that tool. But yet, if they want to loop in experts to, to help them, I don't know, close, close the fiscal, close the quarter, or just get a sales opportunity out of the door, we should be able to do in context from that line of business app that they use every day. So what you're looking at here is some of the integration that we uh, shipped in uh, February of this year, where you know, there's two sides to the coin. There's maybe uh, Christoph, the, or I'll say Angus, the CEO of Contoso, and he's the executive. And he wants to see what's happening. And you know, he's not going to go into, let's say, a CRM tool or a sales automation tool to see every opportunity. But yet, as a CEO, maybe he wants to be notified. Hey, there's a, we won a one million deal in, uh, in Queensland or New South Wales. Or we've lost a one million opportunity. So he cares you know, at a high level on those big wins and losses. And maybe his view of the world is yeah. And that's why it's a little hard to see. But you can see in the center, it's an activity that has been generated by another system. So the activity didn't initiate uh, in Yammer. But again, Angus, because he's the executive, he's the boss, he wants to see that activity. And let's say Christoph is peers who, let's say, um, um, head of sales for, uh, for New South Wales. He's leaving and breathing, in this case, in the sales automation tool. But again, maybe he wants to loop in Angus to get you know, his help, maybe I need uh, him to visit the customer to take that opportunity from, let's say, 80% to 100% uh, uh, one deal. So what you're looking at is, is actually our uh, dynamic CRM online offering, where, again, I can leave and breathe in that sales automation tool. 
but yet I can loop in peers whatever I need to do to bring that uh, opportunity to the, to the finish line. I'm using the example here is around sales automation and CRM, but you can you know, think of adding social to your ticketing, to your maintenance system, to your ERP, to your HR systems, and I'm sure you have a thousand other example in your head of all the line of business apps that you have um, your colleagues using uh, day in, day out. So that's what we mean by social business process. Potentially you can, you can generate a significant um, um, innovations and you know, in the end it's going to yield business agility by bringing this social layer to existing app and connecting all the peers in your organization. You know, maybe breaking down the silos between that sales team that using a CRM tool that's not plugged into the rest of your organization by just putting in that social layer that will connect that CRM or it's online or on-prem with let's say there are rest of the organizations that may be in front of a PC or maybe uh, using uh, Yammer to see what's happening. So I just talked about the, the, the three Haas scenarios just to make it a little more uh, fun. Let's switch to um, a demo and I'll show you um, some of the innovations that we delivered. Let me log back in again. I can remember my password. Um, so what I'm going to show you, this is a 365 tenant. You know, you can sign up for one uh, free of charge. This is a trial tenant and you can kick the tires. Um, and what, I, what I'm going to show you is specifically some of the integration that we started doing between that Yammer as a social layer and some of the uh, Office 365 stack. What I just logged into is uh, what we call the tenant administrator, uh, tenant admin. So you, know, you only see that if you're, again, an administrator of the tenant. If you're on on-premises, that's you know, all the admin that has access to, let's say, the um, central admin in, uh, in SharePoint. Uh, so I'm not going to go over all those services, but specifically I'm going to go into uh, SharePoint. And you got all the different menus you can administer, exchange, link, and all those good things. And if I go to the SharePoint admin, there's a new, if you go to settings, um, which is the last option, and I'm going to click settings. And what I want to bring to your attention to is there's this new uh, button, Enterprise Social Collaboration, use Yammer services. So that's something that uh, we delivered end of May, which is kind of an on-on switch. By default, it's sele SharePoint is selected. And by using Yammer, which is a recommendation, suddenly you see what happens uh, downstream. But basically, again, remember what I told you? It shouldn't be a destination. And then at the end of the day, you should only have one social network powering your enterprise. So it shouldn't be, it should be one or the other. Uh, it shouldn't be both. Like, you know, you hopefully only have one company email. You don't have two. And same thing with social. You should only have one news feed to care about. And you shouldn't have two. So, our recommendations, our big bet is Yammer, so I've switched that. You can try that again on your uh, on a trial tenant if you want. It takes about 15 minutes, and then what it does is it's going to replace what we call the suite navigation. So this button, if it was by default, it says newsfeed, and when as soon as I switch that again after a couple minutes, it'll replace that link to Yammer. And again, I'm. You know, I can click on that, and yes, it's going to launch Yammer. And I'll talk about what we're going to do in the future um, around tighter integration. So that's to enable Yammer as your, to power your social experience in your Office 365 tenant. The next thing we did is, okay, great. Um, so that's one step, but the next thing typically you want is to bring those conversations to those different assets that you have in SharePoint. I remember when I was telling you a social intranet is one of the scenarios to enable enterprise social at your organization. And this is, a, again, a mock-up from our demo tenant where we got a fictitious Contoso homepage. And what I did here is I've added the, the, uh, the Yammer app uh, in this homepage. So potentially, again, this is a demo network, so there's not a lot of activities, but I can see all that activity happening in the different folks I'm following and also in the old company feed at my organization. So potentially I can have some serendipity and some discovery of some of the folks I'm following and things are, that they might be doing that might be of interest to me. And I can participate in, in discussions, you know, hello, 
TechEd. So what this is is basically an app that's free of charge. Uh, oops. And you can do that. And basically, you go add an app. So you click on the settings. And in, um, in SharePoint, you get the list. You can grab applications from your, uh, from your company. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go to the SharePoint store, which is the ad side, and just to show you where the app is. So the app is free of charge and available. You can already get a peek of the richness of all the uh, application e ecosystem that's available for SharePoint. You can type. I'm just going to search for Yammer. And you can see the first one is called um, the Yammer app for SharePoint. And pretty much like you have in, when you're purchasing an app or as a consumer or as an enterprise, it gives you a description, some couple screenshots of what it does. And you just need to add this app. I've already added it. And then to get into that uh, home page, let me go back here. I just need to edit the page, add the app, and, and voila. That's how I did it um, on this intranet. And then the other scenario is that I put in here is, again, typically, either you want to you bring real-time conversation to your social intranet. By the end of the day, you're, you're hopefully by bringing social, you're going to get something uh, done faster. You know, you're gonna, it's going to help you with your day-to-day uh, -day task. In this case, uh, I'm not going to work through the entire demo, but the, the idea is we got a marketing campaign. I'm going to be launching a product. And I've added to this site, where I've got all the marketing material to launch that marketing campaign with a specific product. In this case, the Yammer app, instead of mapping to all the people that I follow or the entire company activities, it's only mapped to a specific a group called a marketing group. So again, when I log in, let's say that's my home page because I'm in marketing, I can see all the activities, all the discussions uh, that are happening between the marketing org at Contoso with one click. And then I can you know, click on the app, and if I want a more immersive experience, I'm taken to the Yammer group, and now I can see all the same conversations that I was seeing earlier um, in, um, in SharePoint. So, um, but wait, there's more. So that's the app. The third thing I want to show you, and, and then I'm going to switch to slides, is um, again, if you remember that screenshot, you know, we think Yammer and SharePoint is definitely a great better together. You know, SharePoint's been around for over a decade and it's got definitely industrial strength content management, whether it's, you know, having very complicated workflow to manage whatever the life cycle of documents you're producing or things like SkyDrive. Like I say, you've got a lot of existing documents in those doc document library, but maybe you want to collaborate in context because, as I say, it should be seamless. And here, so I went to a, a list of documents specific to that site. So this is just a sh standard document library. And any in 2013, you get a nice preview over card on those documents, really helping me, you know, is this the, the document that I care about? So it looks like it's a little slow. We'll blame it on the uh, internet connection. Um, but basically, there's a new button right here. You see post. And as soon as I do that, it gives me the ability. And I can say, Angus, please review V1 of marketing campaign. And I can modify others, and maybe I'll put that into the marketing team. Okay, we'll put it in the IT support. And voila. So one click, I didn't leave SharePoint. I'm where probably maybe I'm leaving and breathing, uh, working on, uh, on those different documents. And I started a conversation with peers that, um, in this case, I asked for my peer to do a review cycle, but it could have been an announcement. Hey, here's the new marketing campaign plan. You'll pass it around. So the idea is I didn't need, you know, it's in context. I didn't need to leave that SharePoint to start collaborating with my peers on a specific deliverable. And that works for um, uh, all the items that are stored in document library. Obviously, this is Office document, but I could have done the same thing, initiate a doc, uh, conversation on a JPEG, on, a, on whatever file you put in your, uh, in your uh, document library. So stay tuned. We're going to make the, uh, the official announcement um, in a couple of weeks. But this is just, against a glimpse of some of the tighter integration between 
um, Yammer on SharePoint. So switching gears, again, I'll show you a glimpse on some of the initial integration, but we're not going to stop there. And that's what I have on this slide. Typically, when I talk about a roadmap, because this is a top of mind topic, what I remind everyone is things are going to be different uh, going forward ever since you know, we've launched 365 and the new wave of SharePoint, Exchange, Link, and, 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 and uh, SharePoint, et cetera. And basically, our new development met methodology is going to be very rapid. Yammer ships new features on a weekly basis. In 365, as uh, my colleague Michael Latala uh, discussed yesterday, it's on a monthly basis. And the point is things are going to move very fast. No longer, you know, you need to wait three years to see significant innovation. It might not, you know, at that cadence, it's not going to be a big bang every time. It's going to be incremental. And more importantly, all the innovations is going to be based on, on feedback, meaning we're not going to do it in a vacuum back in Renman. Hey, let's pretend where we think w what your need is going to be in three years. We're going to test that based on data. Hey, here's what's working, what's not working, on, based on, on analytics that we get back from usage. We're going to tweak things. Maybe you want to go back to the drawing board and tell the engineers, hey, we don't think that feature is really helping engagement. So you know, go back to the drawing board because I don't think it's ready for prime time. So we got a very new way of, of, of engineering products. And that's what translates into this roadmap. So today I've talked already about the, that switch to enable Yammer as your default social experience in 365. I talk about the app. One thing I forgot to mention is we also publish guidance for on-premises. I've got a slide about uh, SharePoint on-prem later. But again, the idea of having, you should only have one news feed, you know, you can enable that on-premises as, as well, and that's a white paper. And then in our last roadmap update, which was um, to mark the one year anniversary on June 25th, we announced some of the things we're working on in the fall and in the winter timeframe. And a lot of people ask, me, you know, hey, Christoph, how can you not giving me what you're going to do next year, next two years? And the reason is, again, back to the first bullet, we're going to iterate incrementally. And while we do have a laundry list of things on our backlog in terms of tighter integration, we, that's, the, that's what's been committed in terms of engineering resources to date. So I know those are going to ship. Uh, everything else is on the backlog. So again, you can read that. You know, I've talked about document conversations. Office 365 single sign-on, um, we've documented that. But there's a lot more things that are going to be coming. And it's definitely going to be the next six, six months are you're going to see a lot of innovations coming. Bring the products together or just pure net new innovations uh, on the services. And then the next question I get is, OK, Christoph, what hap what's happening uh, after the winter? Well, we're going to continue to iterate. And again, back to what I was talking earlier, you know, our aspiration is to deliver connected experiences. And that's what I was talking earlier when I talking about social productivity, or when I was saying social should be in context, is that we're going to continue to integrate with the first the Microsoft stack. You know, I mentioned Link earlier. Those are aspirations. But maybe in the future, you should have, if you're using Link, or if you're using Yammer and you want to switch to voice and video, because you're maybe you're old-fashioned, and you think maybe that's a better way to get settled things, whatever is the <coughs> issue, or you want some, uh, provide some immediate help to your uh, peer, uh, you should be able to do so. So that's why we're striving in the future. And again, this is going to be ongoing, so stay tuned for more announcement. With that, um, and one more slide. Sorry, Angus. I'll get a buffer. Um, how about on-premises? So we do care about on-premises business. I didn't ask specifically or show hands on which version of SharePoint. But you know, let's be very clear. First of all, you can integrate Yammer today with SharePoint 2010 or SharePoint 2007. And for 2013, you can do so as well. And that's actually our recommended approach. I know, I don't know, some of you might uh, still be in a, a decision process. You might be on SharePoint 2010, or you might be embarking on a prototype or a proof of concept or an upgrade to 2013. Again, our recommendation is Yammer should power your social experience. And those two reasons down there. You know, it's immediate, you know, it's instant on, and it's also the service that's going to be innovating the faster. And to enable that on-premises, those two links that you, know, you can download the slides. There's that guidance, that white paper I talked about. And then there's that app that I showed it to you online. But guess what? In 2013, the online app works also for SharePoint on-premises. So that's a recommended approach where you know, another way to think about it is think hybrid. Social in the cloud, SharePoint 2013 uh, on-premises. And then 
um, if you cannot go to the cloud for regulatory or whatever reasons um, um, you have, then our recommendation is to go to SharePoint 2013. SharePoint 2013 has great social capabilities, you know, newsfeed, photos, uh, which I didn't show you. Um, and again, you know, that should be the, for those of you that cannot leverage a multi-tenant um, uh, service. Okay, so just to summarize that, I talk about the roadmap, I talk about the, our approach. Now Angus is gonna switch more on how to get started with Yammer, and then I'll transition to the, that cookbook called The Social <coughs> Journey. Cool, how do we uh, switch back to this? Taking up site, number seven. There we go. All right, cool. So what I want to show you guys today is um, is basically just the 101 to help you get value from Yammer really quickly. Again, it's a question in the customer success team that I'm part of. It's a question we get all the time. So how, how do I get value from Yammer? What does it mean? What's the ROI? We get that question a lot as well. So what I want to show is how how you can make Yammer make sense to you and then you can go and explain this to, you, to the other guys in your company really quickly just by doing a really uh, few simple tips that I'll take you through today. So for those who haven't seen Yammer before, um, this is the homepage that you get when you go to yammer.com. Uh, and the main features on here are obviously the newsfeed, which is this bit down the middle, and this is the guts of it, and this is what I'm gonna tell you how to customize this to suit you and make sense to you. We've got the groups down the side, which again, Christoph was talking about and how we can link those into different applications. Uh, the newsfeed on the right-hand side here, and this is uh, the activity, sorry, the activity stream. And this is really for when you, Right now it just shows Yammer activity, but as you start to build this into your other applications, it could be Angus updated an opportunity in, in Dynamics or Angus created a purchase order in SAP. So this is the activity stream that starts to show a lot of those um, apps, uh, activities from different apps. And then across the top we've got your navigation and profile stuff. So I'll talk about those really quickly. But what I want to go through today is, is really building this my stream, my, your my feed to help it make sense to you. So, and this can work with both. So if you've got an existing Yammer tenant and it's quite a mature network, you've had it for a few years. Um, a lot of the comments that we get when we go into customers like that is saying, it's too noisy, it doesn't make any sense, I can't find anything I want to find in there. Uh, or it could be if you're a brand new customer, how do I make sense of this where people are just sharing links to news articles? How do I get it to actually bring value to me? So what the premise that we want, want to try and convince people of is, when you first start a Yammer network, Yammer's very much a place you come to talk about work. So you'll post stuff that you think might be interesting for other people, that kind of thing. What we really want you to do, and what we do at Yammer is, is, is actually use Yammer as a place to do work. And whether that's embedded in a different application or using yammer.com, um, it's really getting there and doing, doing your work inside there. And to be able to do that, you need to be able to find value really quickly. So more for people who have, have had mature networks and have lots of groups and lots of people and thousands and thousands of messages. What I want to do is just reset expectations and sometimes, and I even do it at Microsoft. When October last year when we moved into the Microsoft Yammer network, there was 400 of us at Yammer and then we just joined a network with over 100,000 people in it. You know, my, my background before joining Yammer was I was a SharePoint consultant. So I joined this group and I saw the SharePoint group and I thought that's cool, I'll join that group and I'll join, I'll join the Xbox group and it was just before Windows 8 was going to be launched, so I joined the Windows 8 group. and I joined all these amazing groups and I could talk to all these cool people around the world. But all of a sudden, someone who, who uses Yammer every day to get their work done, all of a sudden my newsfeed was just cluttered with all this stuff that didn't actually help me do my job. So what I do, I have this very simple rule that I tell new customers or existing customers or, and a lot of the Microsoft guys is, is the five by five. So follow five groups, join five groups and follow five people. Keep it really simple. But they've got to be five groups that you do work with every day. So it could be projects you're a part of, your team group, your area, or it could, and it must be five people you work with every day. So, so the simplest way to, to join groups is up the top here. You have your groups menu, and you can see a list of all, all the groups within your company. And again, there might be groups on there that are cool and you want to experiment more with it. But again, I encourage you just to join the groups that interest you and you work on a daily basis. And then this way it will, um, it narrows that my feed down and cuts out all the noise. So if I join my, my project group, so I've got, you know, I work on the NAB account, so I'm in the NAB account group. I've got Telstra, I've got my local Yammer team. I've got my global Yammer team I'm a part of, and that's really about it. We keep it very small. So I know that any post that comes into my feed 
it's usually something that I'm already working on. So it, it's, it adds value for me and I can add value back into it. Same goes with people. When, uh, when you start Yammer, there's always people in your organization who love Yammer and are very social and love to share lots of stuff and they might put in pictures and jokes and all that kind of stuff. And that might be cool, but if they're not someone who you work with every single day, chances are they're not going to be adding a huge amount of value for you in your Yammer, in your feed. So again, come into the people section and I know, just add your colleagues, your peers, your manager, maybe your team, and maybe if you, know, if you need to follow some execs, you can do that too, but really keep it small. And the beauty of that is when you come back into your My Feed, this will now only show you the stuff that you need to see every day and you can get, get that stuff, uh, get that value really, really quickly. Now, th the last thing I do when I join these groups is you have these three different options at the top here. So you've got top, all, and following. So following is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically all the messages from the groups you're a part of and all the messages from the people you follow. So that's why I'm saying it's important only to have five and five to begin with. Um, and this is what I use, particularly in Microsoft. There's you know, 180,000 people on that network. I only really need to see the people uh, that I work with on a daily basis. The next one is all. And again, for new networks, this might be a good option because you get a chance to see what's happening. You can connect different people if they're not quite sure what they're doing. All basically shows every single message in every public group across the network by anybody. So again, in a, in a network like ours, uh, it doesn't work, but for smaller ones or if you're just starting, it's, it's not a bad way to start. And then the final one is top. And this is a mix between following, um, so it's just your following group, but it also, if I don't follow Christoph, but he happens to post uh, in a public group and he gets 100 replies, it's an interesting conversation, Yammer will pick that up and put it into my feed because it thinks it might be something I'm interested in. So I personally just use the following one and then you can save that preference with the little clog and say remember my feed selection and from now on that's my default feed. And this is my default feed on all my devices now. So if it's on my mobile, it's on my tablet, it's in my desktop app if I use it, it's, um, it's everywhere. So if, it's in, uh, if you're embedded in SharePoint or Dynamics, wherever it is, it's that same feed everywhere you go. So it's really useful to get that right up front. How are we tracking for time? Okay. So the next thing I want to show you very quickly is how to set up your notifications properly. So one of the things that we often tell people who use Yammer or so any sort of social network is it will hopefully reduce uh, the amount of email that you get on a daily basis. And it does do that the majority of time. But when you first join Yammer and when you invite people to Yammer, they get inundated with emails. Every time you, someone clicks on something, you tend to get an email. So I always encourage people to come in uh, and set up their notifications properly. So I just went into account, edit account, and you can do a whole bunch of stuff in here. But today I just want to focus on notifications. And in here, this is all your notifications for your network. And this is what you get by default. So again, the Daily Digest, so if you follow that rule I said and you just follow the groups and people that are interesting to you, your Daily Digest becomes a lot more relevant. So you get an email and it has stuff that you care about. That's really important. Maybe to start off you can do daily, switch it to weekly. I personally, I don't get any emails from Yammer so I turn, I turn this off because I'm in there all the time. But again, depending on your maturity, go with that. The next section is really around notifications and this is where um, I don't believe you necessarily get the value that you need. If you're going to get email from Yammer, or if you're going to get email from anybody for that matter, you want to make sure that it's actually useful to you and you can action them and get something from it. So almost all the options here you can get from the notification bell inside Yammer or if you've got it on your apps, you'll get a buzz on your phone. So you can actually get these ambient notifications in other places. Uh, and again, the fact that someone likes a message that I post doesn't necessarily add value to what I'm doing. So I, I generally untick all those notifications. But the interesting thing is this next part. So these are the groups that I'm a member of. So again, if you go back to what I said at the start and you're only a member of the groups that you need to be a part of, this actually becomes really useful. So if I'm in the finance team and I need to be aware of everything that is going on in that group, I can tick this and I'll actually get an, an email every time someone posts into that group. And that's useful particularly for people who are, who are in that transition of going from email into social. So they'll get an email in Outlook and they can either click on the link and go into Yammer and respond or they can respond straight from that email and it'll get posted into Yammer and keep them in that conversation. So this is a really cool way. So this way you almost guarantee that any email you get from Yammer is actually relevant to you and it's going to help you do your job. Okay. And then the final thing I just wanted to touch on really is around, is around groups and how you use groups 
within Yammer. So this is this is not the free version, is it? Okay. So to create a group in Yammer is really easy, and anyone on your network can do it. It's not an admin thing. It's anyone on the network can create one. It's as simple as saying create group. You give it a name, a description. You can decide whether it's public or private. So if I say, uh, take it, uh, you give a description. Again, I, I always encourage people to make groups public if you can. Uh, the more stuff is that is public and transparent, the quicker and, and more discoverable this sort of stuff is. Obviously, there are there are times when you need private groups, but as much as you can, try and keep stuff public. You can add anyone you want, and again, you can also do bulk updates to this. So if you wanted, to, if I wanted to add everyone in TechEd to a group, I could do that just using a CSV. Okay, and now you've got your group. So the same, so the beauty of a group is you can now, if you think, if you're trying to move people from email to Yammer, which is what we do on a daily basis at Microsoft now, is basically, if you think of a DL, so I could create a DL for TechEd AU and everybody in this room to it. And then I could email you out and you could respond back and very quickly it becomes a nightmare. So what we do instead is we create a group, add everybody to the group, and we can start to have those conversations in here. The problem with that is though, if we have 2,000 people who are at TechEd posting to this group, all of a sudden you have that same problem with the noise. So if I have an important announcement that, that this room has changed to room eight, and I post it in here, unless you're looking at that group, you'll never see it. So the beauty of, of groups and being admins of groups is you have this ability to post announcements. An announcement is like a standard Yammer post, but you're able to give it a title, and then there's some basic formatting, so you can add links and bold stuff that you can't do in a normal Yammer message, and then post that. And what this does as an announcement is actually notifies everybody in that group. So, and they'll get an email if they sign up to that group as well. So it's a good way to transfer. If, they, if you're trying to get people onto Yammer, moving them from DLs into, into Yammer groups is a really great way to start to do that. And the final thing I want to show you quickly before this is around following content. So as Christoph was saying, uh, and I was saying, you can follow people and follow groups, and that starts to build out your social network. What, what's really cool is you can start to follow content in Yammer. And it's not only in Yammer, but in SharePoint and other apps as well. But a, great, a simple example of this is if we upload a file to Yammer. Where did my file go? Anyway, if we uploaded a file to Yammer, I'm not sure where they went, uh, you can basically Maybe. follow a file. Put it in Tech It. It was on the uh, old company. Uh, anyway, where's it up here? Anyway, so you can follow content. So basically the point is, and what Christoph was alluding to before is, if, if we're working on, on this presentation, which we actually did in our Microsoft network, he uploaded to a group, I follow that file. Whenever he makes a change to it, I get a ping and notification, and I can go and fix it up, and then he gets a ping. And that's really good with this social stuff, but then when, and again, Christoph talked about it, if you start to put that into things like your CRM, so I follow an account, and every time someone makes a change, an opportunity, and I get pinged on that, and then I can rope in other people. That's when you start to get real value, and you can tie those into groups and all kinds of stuff. So that's um, when you start to get that social graph of objects and content within your organization, that's become, when it becomes really powerful. And then when you put search, not only do you find the content you're looking for, the document, but you'll also then find the conversation that goes with it, which is sometimes more important, because files can lose their value really quickly, but the conversations that happen around them that's the stuff that's really cool because you can find out who worked on them, how they got to that point, who made the decisions, uh, and, 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 and then how you can go and, and find those new documents and update them. So that's, that's kind of it from a really, really, really quick 101. I had a bit more stuff, but I think we're going to run out of time. What was the other one? Six. <coughs> so what I want to talk about now quickly is the social journey. And this is something that um, the my team do as the, as the customer engagement team. So we look after, basically once um, you're a paid customer of Yammer, we come in and help you derive value from Yammer and you know, run best practice sort of seminars. We can do workshops and training and basically make sure that you guys are getting the value from Yammer uh, and social. So we, we developed this methodology called the social journey, which is basically how we, how we get customers and we take them through from, from the very start, from not having a network and planning for it, right through to rolling it out across the business, getting champions, getting community 
be managers, um, integrations, all that kind of stuff. So the five main pillars, and again, this is all, all available publicly online, and I've got a link that I can share with you guys at the end, so you can go through this um, later. But the five main things are, the first one is really about defining your vision. So the important thing to remember about a social network is it's not a technology implementation. A successful Yammer network is not a software that you install. It's actually where you have engaged, you have um, adoptions so of people are on there and people are using it. So if you think of traditional, you know, I used to go and do SharePoint installs, the success is when you got it up, to, up and running and you set it as the home page of everyone's thing. This is the next step. Because it's in the cloud, it's, it's on, there's no installation. You basically, it's really about getting that value and getting that adoption and that engagement across the business. The next thing, what you, so to do that, it's really about um, identifying the vision, not just for Yammer, but for the business. What are the current problems and opportunities you guys have? And how do you think social can fix that? Where have other customers similar to you had success like this? And this is where we can come in and help you do that. And when you think of all the different stuff that, that you can do with Yammer, it's really then that it comes to the next point about mapping that to business value. So, you know, Yammer itself is not a particularly complex piece. It's, it's fairly simple. It's not feature, feature it but it's how people use Yammer, that's where you get the value from it. It's not actually a, uh, you know, you don't buy Yammer because it has these features, you buy it because it's an open and transparent way of working. Once you've mapped it to the value and you've identified how you're gonna use social to uncover and fix some of these problems you've got, it's really about this idea of working social. So if you think, um, you know, it's a big change, it's a behavioral change, it's around change management. So people who live in Outlook and live in IM and it's really, really hard. You can't just make them all of a sudden work social. It's a hard thing to do. So it's really about change management and behavior management. And, and that's sort of where we come in to help you guys guide that. And there's a whole bunch of material on how you can do that as well. So it's really about getting executive engagement, sponsorship, getting them on board and using it, identifying community managers within your business and getting them to help around it, all that kind of stuff. That, and that's, all, that's the sort of the planning phase. The, the fourth phase is around you know, driving success, actually doing it using Yammer as a tool, embedding it in your other systems, getting AD and SSO, all that technical stuff set up and working, um, and really just going through it. And then the final thing, and again, what Christoph touched on, is everything's iterative. So it's not a set and forget. You don't turn Yammer on, you don't do this once and then walk away. You, you do that small one, you map to value, you get the success, and then you share that success back to a different part of the business. So you've had HR guys, they're happy they've done their bit. Let's take what we did there and maybe apply it to the sales force or maybe apply it to the call center guys or maybe the IT change management. All these different things and it's just a constant cycle. You've got to keep going through it. It's not something you can just turn on, turn on and let it go. There we go for time. I think I'm smashing through it. This is my last slide. Basically, after, over the sort of four or five years that Yammer's been around, I've been there for two, well, we've seen a lot of successes and we've seen uh, a lot of failures too, but this is, these are the four characteristics of a successful Yammer network. And they're pretty easy to do. Uh, and again, we've got all the materials that help you do this, but just want to basically take through them. So that clarity of vision, that's the first one. And that's the, that's the one I was talking about at the start. It's really about tying it to those business processes and value, business value stuff. If you can't do this, if you can't explain why you're using a social network, it's not because it's free, it's not because you've got a part of your EA. It's got to be tied to something and you've got to be able to tell people why that. So it's really key that you do that up front. Sponsorship and participation is another really, really good example of how our networks have failed and how they've won. So Telstra is a great example. So Telstra had a free Yammer network for about three years before they went paid. They had about 6,000 people on there, which is not too bad. Pretty good network, but compared to the size of their organisation, it was quite small. Uh, in August last year, David Thody jumped on board Yammer, the C CEO, and said, this is really cool, I want my entire exec team on this, and I want them to respond and ans answer questions that are coming through. So within four months, uh, they went from the 6,000 people on there to 25,000 people on there, activated users, and they have around, hovering between 20 and 23 engaged users, 23,000 engaged users every single month. And that's pretty much because David Thody's on there every single day, answering questions, responding to posts, and if he can't do it, he's pointing to his other execs around the company to do that as well. So they've had a great example of how sponsorship and participation of that level can really boost your network. But it doesn't have to be executive. We've seen great success in larger companies with general managers, or even having a team leader at a call center can add their entire team to that. And then when they get that success, 
the next team leader can say, well, look what they've done and they get their team one. So if you can get that top down support, it works really well. Because with Yammer, you generally get bottom up, that's easy. It's a top down, that's the challenge. Integration is the other one. And again, as Christoph said, it's actually going to get easier and easier as we start to integrate more with the products. But even today, you can, you can integrate with all that stuff now, just a little bit harder. And again, Telstra is another great example of how they did this. The day that they integrated Yammer to the homepage of their intranet, their spike went up, I think it was there at 10,000 to 15,000 within a week. So that integration and putting it where people are, not making it a separate destination, makes a huge difference. So you know, if they're in CRM or they're in an ERP, put Yammer inside that. If they're a sales guy on the road, give them the app, you put them on their tablet, you know, they'll be able to get value from it much quicker. And then the final one is community management. And this, is, um, this can work, I've seen it work both uh, two different ways. The first way is a company has hired a, a um, community manager, which is good, but a lot of people won't do that. I mean, it's an extra headcount. Um, but they work really well and they can connect people and they do that. What I've seen work really well, though, is every company that has a Yammer network has these evangelists inside it. People love it. And if they don't like Yammer, maybe they're on Twitter or they're on, they're on Blogger or Instagram. People get, you'll have people in your organisation that get social and know how to get value from working out loud. So you want to empower these guys. And this is actually what we did uh, in the Microsoft network really well. So again, there's, there's people like me and there's 50 of us around the world and there's no way that's enough to kind of scale to the size that we wanted to get to. So we identified another 100 people inside Microsoft who really understood Yammer and got it and got to work social and we, we put them on a training course and we got them certified and we give them access to all the stuff to be able to go and connect other people. And ideally the end game is that every single person in your organisation is a community manager. It shouldn't be down to one person to connect this stuff. The community should manage itself. So really try and find those, keep people on your network who, who embrace this stuff and get it and empower them. Don't block them down, let them do this stuff, run, run with it, train them, certify them. Get them out there and get them helping other people so you can get more and more, more champions. Uh, final one. So this is the success center I was talking about. So this is, if you go to success.yammer.com, everything I've spoken about is on there. It's all free, all public. You've got the social journey stuff. There's a whole bunch of templates and resources you can download and rebrand and use in your own networks and your own, own intranets. There's a bunch of videos and decks for training, uh, webinars, all sorts of stuff. There's product updates for when we're releasing new features, so that's sort of the Yammer roadmap. Uh, and then in the admin and IT, again, it's all public, but you can get the SharePoint installation stuff. You can learn how to do AD Sync and SSO. There's all sorts of integrations and admin tools in there. And this is getting updated, you know, constantly, weekly, bi-weekly. So lots and lots of stuff in there. Definitely check out success.yammer.com. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll probably hand back to you now. Thank you, Angus. Cheers, mate. So uh, hopefully you've seen... Sorry, yeah. yeah it's more about business process and governance. I mean, you were talking, and your technical person yesterday talked more about kind of chaos, I would say, um, and about um, decision making process and governance. So, if you're getting all these people making lots of comments per minute, I mean, it can be put like an election campaign. There's a lot of populist stuff coming up, and decision makers know how the biggest success and the direction. Yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting one. I mean, I haven't ever seen that particular example. But one thing that a social network does, good or bad, is it will amplify your company's culture. So if you have a bad company culture or you have a bunch of employees that are unhappy with what's happening, you know, if you give them something like this, they have a voice to do that. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because it also gives you an opportunity to be able to respond in an open and transparent way. You know, for this is why you need that senior level engagement to be able to do that. So, I mean... It's a, it's a hard question to answer because it's kind of a hypothetical one and it's one that I haven't seen before. I think most people, you know, it's got your name, it's got your badge, so people aren't going to be on purpose harassing and if they are, then that's a separate issue altogether. But, um... So you, have to, oh, you can't just throw this in the company without having supporting policies of, like, harassment and... Um, well, it should, it should, most... You know, you can actually um, set up a usage policy so when you start up Yammer, it'll pop up and you have to accept those rules. The best one I saw of them at a customer locally was 
it was just one line that said, don't do anything that would make us have a usage policy. So that was quite cool. <laughs> but, uh, but most of them just refer to the existing HR policy, something you, like you wouldn't do it in an email, you wouldn't do it in an IM. And if you do it on here, your name's attached to it. It's the same as any other sort of process. If you've got an existing social media policy, it, it should be the same thing. Exactly, and, that, and that's, that's where the whole kind of like behavioral thing comes in, like it's, it's a big issue and Yammer will just amplify what your company already does, so it's an interesting problem. Can I, can I just add to that, where like the government, you could have this and your employers could be using this without you knowing now, so, you know, they're free to put it up there and it's not to organize it, so they might actually be using it in some of your organizations and you don't know about it yet, so, you know, from a policy point of view, Yeah. <laughs> um, but we have a code of conduct for employees and we haven't created any special policies per se. You know, there's no code of conduct by board and that's where we cover appropriate behaviour and yep. so forth. There's always documentation in fact in the CV as well, which is just sort of repetition. Yep. You might have it in that model. So a great example locally is NAB. So they're a bank and they've obviously got a lot of rules and regulations and stuff they can post on there and stuff they can't post on there. Uh, they've been using Yammer for paid version of Yammer for almost four, nearly five years. They were one of the original guys, nearly five years now. And they have, their admins have never had to delete a message from their network. The community manages itself, which I think is where you want to get to. And I think most, I've never actually seen an example where an employee's gone rogue on Yammer, or at least lived to tell the tale about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's part of, yep. Perfect. Yep. You can actually raise flags for the management. Yeah, you can do keyword monitoring. That's all part of the admin stuff, yeah. So that controls what is that actually employee Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just another quick governance question around files. Now we've we've been starting within our organization to toy with Yammer. I've sort of got my foot squashed on it until we, we look at it and understand what we can do with the paid version. Yep. You you showed uploading a file. Right? How did the heart attack of our files start to get stored in Yammer out in the cloud, right? So is there a way, for instance, when we go to the, if you go to the um, paid version, you, know, you still want to discuss the documents and what have you, and that's one of our big drivers is mm -hmm. the ability to discuss, uh, discuss documents. So internally, I've got guys pushing towards NewsGator because of that very thing. Yep. So it's quite interesting to see that you now got the plugin to us and didn't even know that that app existed. Um, but <coughs> can you restrict the ability to prevent being able to upload files to Yammer and instead make sure that SharePoint remains the no, not, there's not a technical way to block it as such. But again, NAB's a perfect example where they're covered by all these legislation where you can't upload certain types of files offshore. And so they built that into their policy on how to use Yammer. And everyone is aware of that when they sign up, they know what they can and can't do. So they upload their files to SharePoint and they have the integration and then they have that conversation around it. So it, there's, a, there's a certain level of trust that you have to give your employees to do this kind of stuff and, and there will be mistakes, but again, if you get that community right and the engagement right, the community will manage itself and if they see something that's not meant to be up there, nine times out of ten, they'll pull it out themselves and, or alert an administrator saying, can you fix this up for me? Yeah. But technically, there's not, there's not a way to do that, no. Just a, just a question here. In a, in a young and mature organisation, is there a niche for email still? Honestly? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it, well, it depends yeah. who's your audience. Like, you know, I get a lot of emails from customers. And they're not all on external networks, and they're not on Link, or they're not on Skype. You know, so there yep. still might be those one-off cases uh, where it's still very valid. Now, that's one way to communicate in addition to phone and voicemail and face-to-face -face meeting. Um, so that, that's typically one use case. Yeah, and that's, and that's exactly Outside how of the organization we use it. Typically is the, yeah, is that, the use case. and right now, um, meeting invites and calendars, we do through email, because there's no other way to do that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Within the Yammer organization in Microsoft, that's definitely the case. Um, since we got brought into Microsoft, there is more email, but we're trying to get Microsoft more Yammer, and it's, uh, we're getting closer. But, well, uh, but plus, to add to that, and then I'll, I'll wrap up uh, to make sure uh, um, 
I got a couple slides. But the idea, you remember, initially I said, I mentioned our approach should be uh, seamless. Meaning if Christoph has been using email for many years and he's got all his rules and his colors and his, his day and his task management is driven by his outlook, then fine. Like, we don't want to rock his world, but yet he should be social and participate in conversation. So we're definitely looking at doing tighter integration. Like Angus said, you can already go pretty far with notifications on helping Christoph to crawl, walk, run. Uh, so you don't rock my boat and suddenly you know, I'm completely turned off. Um, so this is something we're definitely working on. Actually, some of the initiatives is, is trying to help people graduate without saying it's black and white. Stop using email and go Yammer. We fully realize that's not acceptable uh, from a change management perspective. Um, so let's hold off on the question. We'll be around. Let me just cover a couple slides before you all leave. Uh, as we mentioned, we got tons of assets. Where you want to stay up to date on the roadmap or announcement, and you get the blogs and the Twitters. Customer Success Center, Angus talked about it. You want to learn about pricing. Typically, the question we get is, you know, what's the difference between basic and enterprise? And like Angus said, basic, you get the full functionality. Everything a pirate would, you, would use or a novice. And enterprise is really for IT. That's when, if you want to do Active Directory Sync or single sign on, so Christoph doesn't have to re enter his credentials. And more importantly, if Christoph is a student, and when he, you know, he does an internship on when he goes back to uni, he's removed from AD, he's removed from Yammer, and you know, he doesn't have access to information he shouldn't have access to. So that's what Enterprise gives you. And there's a link that gives you side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, link to Enterprise IT, all those advanced, you know, uh, lady in front was mentioning, yes, we have keyword monitoring. So if Christoph uses some bad, non-approved words, uh, he can be kindly, the admin can be notified, and Christoph can be reminding in whatever shape or form of uh, how to behave. Uh, Yammer Developer Center, again, you know, this, I know this is a technical audience, and remember we talk about you know, one of the key pillars to be successful is to integrate. You want to integrate Yammer with one of those line of business apps that I mentioned. You sh you, uh, there's plenty of uh, content, think of SDK, you're probably used to in the Microsoft world. So there's a lot of assets there. There's also a vibrant community where you can ask questions on OAuth and da 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 da. So it's very, actually very pretty straightforward to integrate Yammer. And then the SharePoint integration, I kind of summarize all the links. The bottom line is, again, it's a story that's going to be evolving very fast. So do not wait for a year to see another session on Yammer. Definitely make sure you, you bookmark it on, on, on check the latest and greatest uh, once in a while. I'm not going to have time to play this video, but if you, when you get the deck, click on the, on the CEO's face. And I think what's interesting about this, this video is, you know, you're not going to hear about a CIO talking about value. This is the CEO. When Adam talked about that new burger that they launched and how he reached out to those non um, to those deskless workers that I was mentioning earlier. It's him in his own word. He's talking about real, real ROI. How, did it, how much you know, money did it save um, by tapping to the entire pool of waiters and waitress to ship a new recipe and, and continue to be a leader in that segment of a burger chain in the US. So again, I, I think it's a very insightful um, thing to maybe show to your peers if you get, you know, we'll have naysayers that, or at each organization that's still not bought into the value. Um, so to summarize, you know, I talk about the journey and uh, what's unique about our approach. I showed you different scenarios to enable social, and you know, we've talked about social intranet, social productivity, and social business process. I give you a little glimpse of some of the uh, dotted lines in terms of integration between SharePoint and Office 365 on Yammer. Angus talked about how to use Yammer, and more importantly, how to go about that journey that you know this is a it's going to be iterative and it's not going to happen overnight. Um, so a couple next steps. For those of you that haven't signed up, again, like we said, it's free. You know, kick the tires, try it out. Uh, like we say, we got a lot of assets to help you get started, crawl, walk, run, to go about this social journey. And then, you know, if you uh, want to find other customers, whether it's in Australia or elsewhere, whether it's in your industry or whether it's a different department, you know, there's a lot of great stories out there on this, um, on this site typically video case studies, so it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to listen. Uh, but guess what, there's gonna be a lot more coming. So again, like this is gonna be a lively set of assets and uh, look at it and then pass this around uh, to the different uh, stakeholders at your organization. So with that, thank you very much for attending this session. Still in your eval, we'll be around and uh, enjoy TechEd.